<laughs> the funniest thing was the guy was like, oh my god, you've come like, come on your pee yet. You and I was like, oh my god, I have. Oh, I was not expecting that. <laughs> As if, like, obviously I knew it was coming. I obviously knew it was coming. I just tried my luck. And we should never try our luck with Mother Nature. I should have known better than that. Hey guys and welcome to Love What Luck. Hope your week's going well. Got a really nice little story for us this week. I feel like last week's was a really relatable one and this week's I feel like it's the same so I'm gonna go straight into it. The reason we're all here. This week's Love What Luck story. When I was in my late 20s I was engaged to someone I'd been with for five years. While I was working away I found out he'd been cheating with a mutual friend and it had been going on for quite a while. Why do people have to cheat with mutual friends? I had read a story about this yesterday, but I can't remember where it was. Hmm, I can't remember, but it was basically somebody had married... Oh my God, what was it? Oh, yeah, I actually can't say because I know the person. <laughs> um, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before yesterday. Um, yeah, basically, they married their deceased wife's best friend. And I'm like, you might say that's what they would want but even if I had passed away would I want my boyfriend to then go with my best friend or a mutual friend probably not I'm not gonna lie just because I'm not here I wouldn't condone if I was alive so <laughs> I don't see how it would be different if I wasn't here um just a little bit strange for me that the mutual friend thing I don't know how close this woman was with the friend but come on like if you're gonna cheat broaden your horizons a little bit please and go with like a different click because I also think if you go with a friend this gotta be so similar to the partner I mean not necessarily but like usually if you've got like a group of friends you know you kind of have lots of the same similarities I don't know if you're from the same place like the same accent and stuff I don't know, something about that just doesn't really sit right with me, so yeah, not good. I immediately ended things but was very depressed about it and wondered if I'd ever meet the one or if the one even existed. I feel like the pressure around the one is massive now. I was actually speaking to my friend about this the other day and she was like, I think you put too much pressure on the one. Like, I don't believe in the one. I believe in the one right now. And I was like, do you know what I do as well? Obviously, that's true. People get married thinking, like, this is the one. And then, like, they, things change in their life. They change as people. And then they get with a, with somebody else. So, like, I know all of that and the reality of it. But still, like, in my heart and soul, I just like to believe that there's a person. I don't believe there's only one person in the whole world. But I do believe in the one and like the whole romantic idea of it basically just meeting somebody and just knowing that they are your person I don't know I'm like pushing 32 now and that's still where my mind is and I'm not ashamed about it but I know full well like as I read this I knew exactly what this woman was feeling so I would be exactly the same if I was engaged with someone I'd be like these this is the one this is the one and we were engaged and then they dad and fay I'd be like well I'm done then there is no one who is the one I would just feel exactly the same and I think that's why I related so much to this story a week later a group of friends took me to the pub to celebrate my birthday a guy I vaguely knew met up with us and bought me a drink. We got on really well that night, but I assumed if anything came of it, it would be a rebound fling, as I'd only just broken off the relationship with my ex. He came over to my place later that week and never left. So imagine, you would just, this is why you're so late, well, you'd be thinking the exact same thing. You've just broken up from somebody. A week later, it's your birthday, which, by the way, shit timing to find out that your boyfriend's been having an affair with your friend. Like, that shit. Um, but you're, like, getting ready for your birthday, and you see somebody there, they buy you a drink again on well. There's no way in hell you'd be thinking it's anything else other than a rebound. Even though I know lots of successful rebound stories... And that's what I would be thinking. Anyway, he came over to my place that week and never left. Three months later, we were married. 
not even engaged guys married and let me tell you this is the saying how you know the saying is true if he wanted to he would this woman was with a guy for five years engaged and within three months she was married to someone else like that is good going that is wild but very very good going you know I had my mother on a podcast episode like months and months ago and her and my father got married within 12 I think that was within three months I think my memory is so bad like she's told me the story so many times I've literally recorded podcast episode on it but that was like a crazy as well it was either like three or six months they were married a different time an absolutely different time this year sorry so three months later we were married and this year we'll be celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary we have two amazing children who are now both in their 20s my husband is my best friend we have so much fun together and have always been able to laugh even when things were at their toughest i can't imagine life without him looking back i can see where a disaster would have been if i'd married my ex and i'm so glad fate had something so much better in store for me and that is like the point of life there I always believe in faith you know this I always believe in timing and I just think it had to happen it had to happen in that moment because the universe knew they just knew that a week later you were going to be in the pub and your true soulmate was going to be there and the universe works in different ways it plays cogs everything happens for a reason and like she said she's just so glad fate stepped in because if she'd married her ex it would have been a disaster obviously because he was having an affair with a mutual friend before they even got married so it was only going to go downhill from there and yeah she literally celebrated 30 years one decision honestly one decision one occurrence one event in your life just changes your whole path it's crazy it's absolutely crazy and that's why i love these stories so as always if you like them please have the podcast get out share the page share the stories share the podcast episode come follow me please and let's help get the podcast out so we can keep getting some of these stories because we know that some of them have been amazingly juicy (laughs) traumatic and lovely but all of them are juicy um so yeah please as i say come follow me come subscribe if you're watching on youtube you know we're doing a giveaway when i reach a thousand followers on spotify we're on over 700 so we are very close it's coming coming slowly but surely so yeah please help the word get out and if you like the episode just share it with your friends comment on the reel etc etc and do you know what I'm always up for comments and you know I've mentioned on you before I get a little bit of hate for my accent yeah mainly on Facebook well basically I knocked my note I don't know if I told you this part but I knocked my notifications off on my phone because for Facebook because I was literally like getting them up on my phone like your accent shit like a nice story but you've got too much makeup on you know just like random bits of hate that would just come up on my phone like unsolicited basically right I did not want it so I knocked my notifications off which helped massively and then usually I just ignore them the other night I think it was after I'd been out I think I was about three wines deep which is never a good place to be if somebody pisses you off and I saw a comment of a guy saying something along the lines of drop the accent had enough of that shite in South Wales so fake I'm like so who has the time to put on an accent and not just me you're saying collectively the whole of South Wales are faking their accent who has the time and quite honestly who has the skill because let me tell you it's not me have you heard me trying to do a different accent i'm quite possibly the worst person at doing accents the other night weirdly in bed i was um (laughs) i was talking to my boyfriend about i think it was somebody i'd met anyway and i was saying he's a geezer and i was like he's a geezer he's a geezer and i was like i can actually do that accent you know i get into the character of apples and pears as I was going on, Matt was like, you sound like Oliver Twist. You've gone from talking in like a southeast accent to sounding like Oliver Twist. <laughs> and I was like, oh 
my god I actually I have I am so bad at doing accents I also before I might have said the story I had a casting before actually it wasn't even a casting I'd had the job um for a toothpaste commercial and you had lines to say they didn't say this to me in the casting by the way so I got the job and then when we were there they were like oh we've got a couple of lines I was like oh hang on now this was also a different time. I mean, you hear a little bit more Welsh people on TV, but still not. I was like, there's absolutely no way that my voice is going to be projected in this advert. I already know it. So anyway, I did it in my accent. And then I was like, do you know what? I can probably do an English accent if that's, you know, if that's better. And they were like, yeah, go on. Yeah, let's try it. Read the whole thing out in my English accent. They all burst out laughing. They were like, you literally sound exactly the same. I was like, no way. <laughs> so yeah, as if like we're faking our accents, um, there's absolutely no need for it. So that was one. And that didn't piss me off. I was just like, come on, I'm actually going to answer you here. And I was ready for a fight, to be honest, in the comments. He didn't reply. I actually think he might have deleted the comments. So one nil there to me. But the one, the comment I've had that has really bothered me this week is on a video I posted talking about penises. <laughs> And on YouTube, a woman commented saying, tell me you're promiscuous without telling me you're promiscuous. And I'm just like, it was so disappointing to get that from a woman, firstly. Like, oh, we've been through shit. You should have my back. Like, it's just as hard out here for you as it is for me. So come on, have my back is my first point. The second point is, so what if I am promiscuous? Thirdly, let's just call me a slut. Like, we all know what promiscuous means you're calling me a slut you were trying to slut shame me so so what if i am what even is a slut a slut is a slut no i'm trying to think about saying beauty is in the eye of the beholder a slut is in the eye of the beholder for starters like fourth or whatever point i'm on i don't know why i'm trying to keep count because this is going to become a rant how do you even know I could be talking about penis sizes as a virgin. You literally have no idea. It was basically my reel that said, you'll always remember a big penis or a small penis. Well, actually, I've been lucky and unlucky enough to experience one, like, one super large penis and one very small one. And that could make up the only two people that I've slept with. Basically, what I'm saying is, give me a break. Like, it is I'm our time. It's 2023. We have come so, so far. I should be allowed to talk about a dick if I want, in the comfort of my podcast, where I'm not forcing anybody to listen. I'm not forcing anybody to watch. You can keep scrolling if it's not what you want to see. You don't have to tune in. But, like, the amount of times I've heard guys talk about girls' tits, girls' arse, call like their bodies their faces oh they shouldn't get their lips done i hate girls wearing fake eyelashes like we're subjected to it all the time all the fucking time every single day there's something out there about women and how we look and you can't just allow me to entertain myself talking about a dick size now and again like let me live Not please. Really. i woke up this morning and i was like oh i should delete the reel I actually deleted it off my Instagram. I just went into panic mode. And I was like, should I delete it off YouTube? Should I delete it off TikTok? And then I was like, no, I'm leaving it on there because I'm not going to allow you a comment to, like, quiet down my voice. If I was sat here with my friend, right, and she had just slept with somebody, whether this is generation thing, I don't know. One of the first things we are saying is, like, how was the sex? Did he make you come? Did he have big dick? That is how women talk. That's what we talk like behind closed doors. So why am I going to filter that out just because women shouldn't talk about that? Like women shouldn't come across promiscuous. Sorry, hun. We're in a different generation and I'm actually really glad that the next generation will be even further ahead and they want to have comments of random strangers online basically trying to such at me. That's why I replied. I was like, are you trying to such at me? An emphasis on the trying because you won't you absolutely won't such in me so yeah that is my very long rant sorry about my comment section this week and i just want to say that i do appreciate every single nice message i get i'm not like 
only focusing on the bad twins like you'll see sometimes I'll repost some of the nice messages I get on my page like I'm so grateful and they just like outweigh everything but sometimes when I get a bad one I'm just like why are we going back so far you know why are we going back in time just, just allow like- me to talk about the girth of a penis on my podcast please just allow it so anyway we're not gonna stop <laughs> there but I have got a bit of a different message this week so I had a very <laughs> interesting dm and once again it just made me weak like you were dms honestly they make my life she said hi sadie i have a story for you on the dick theme lol which is going strong it seems it is power to the big dicks anonymous group except instead of dignitized i guess you could say i was disappointed <laughs> a new word which you'll be using on the podcast disappointed the first was- time I'd ever had sex, my partner at the time had a tiny penis. Obviously, as it was the first I had seen, I didn't quite realise how small. But our first time he put it in and I didn't feel a single thing, I had to ask if he had done it. Oh my god. It's so bad for the guy. It's so, so bad. Imagine. Imagine how disheartening that is. You're having the time of your life as a guy. And then the girl's like have you put it in yet is is this it and he's like it's in i'm almost about to ejaculate inside of you (laughs) like i'm loving my time here and you can't even feel it oh my god so sad i had to ask if he had done it i didn't bleed i was not so fast forward to my second time with my now ex who was of an average size i was in so much pain he could only put it in the he could only put in the tip and i had to tell him to stop it was that moment i realized i had been duped the first time huh I literally replied saying, oh my god, I can't express how grateful I am to receive this message. Because we haven't had any stories from that side yet. But she did say, he actually was awful, so I'm glad he has a small dick. And I was like, do you know what? My experience of the small dick, the guy was also awful. He was absolutely the worst person I've ever met and ever dated. Well, not ever met, but ever dated by, like, the longest mile. And I was like, maybe, and not everyone, of course... But maybe that is the universe's way of putting some karma. Like, if you're an arsehole, you are going to have a small penis. And, you know, I've got no complaints about that. So, yeah, thank you for sharing. Again, if you've got any stories you want to share, come at me. The thing is, on this podcast, I do a nice love story. We do nice thoughts of the week. Sometimes dicks come in too, you know. So what? What are you going to do? Assume me? You'll have to catch me first. I'm like a whip it. I'm not even going to reference where's that from. If you know it, then good for you. You're my type of person. If you're done, then get on Google and TikTok because it's a very funny video. Another thing that I think is really taboo for girls to talk about, so obviously I'm going to this week, but I actually had a request this week to talk about this. So by the way, guys, if you have got anything that you want me to chat about, then please just let me know. Just send me a DM, send me an email. And anyway, this was my friend, and she sent me a voice note. But it was so funny, right? Because she sent me a voice note basically saying, I haven't heard from this guy. And then by the time I answered, she was like, I've heard from him now, all fine. No, like one of those memes where you're like, I'm done with him. It's probably because of this, this, this. And then 10 minutes later, they're like, oh, he's replied, it's fine. Don't worry, you can ignore me. Done. <laughs> um, but no, one thing I think is really taboo to talk about is periods. I don't know why, because it's something that happens to every single woman, every single month. It's not something that's new, that's come about, but oh my god, the sort of like disgust and judgment and outrage and embarrassment it brings, and it really shouldn't. So basically, my friend was in a dilemma where she gets really bad period pains, right? And she really like can't do much when she's on her period. So she said that she was planning a date on Friday. I think this was like on a Wednesday, right? So planning a date two or three days ahead. Was really looking forward to meeting the guy. Like, really nice date planned. But she knew she was due on. So she said to him, look, I'm really excited for the date. But I'm just going to be honest. I'm due on my period. And when I am like that, then I just can't really function. And if it comes, then I'm probably going to have to cancel. But I just want you to know that like it's not personal you know obviously that's not word for word but something like that yeah and um, she basically didn't hear from him and she was worried because this has happened to our guys before where they've either like fully ghosted her or they've just been really funny with her 
And I was like, surely now, like, guys just understand. But honestly, right, I found a thread on Reddit. I was like, I'm going to look into this and see, like, what the streets are saying. So a guy wrote saying, I understand that women's experiences during a period are different from person to person. But is it common for a woman to cancel a date last minute because of it? I've already told her it's perfectly fine and we can reschedule when she's comfortable. But this has never happened to me before, so I thought I'd try to get a different perspective. So he's like genuinely worried, like, am I being blown off you? So obviously you can tell when his girl's commenting because they're like, everyone's different. My friend, my periods are just an inconvenience, but I have friends who literally cannot function. I definitely believe her. Um, I've seen women doubled over in pain. Of course, it's an easy excuse for a girl. I'm like, not really, because how is that an easy excuse? When guys are so, like, grossed out about periods, do you really think it's an easy excuse to say, do you know what, I've actually got my period coming? Like, I would actually find that quite hard to tell a guy. Like, when my friend said she texts him, I was like, you go, girl. All cards on the table. Because I'm not going to lie, I'd probably end up making a liar. But I don't know, which I kind of hate myself a bit for, really. But... It's not an easy excuse, especially when you're so judgmental. You're literally writing on Reddit, <laughs> Reddit thread about it. So it's not like commonly used, is it? Um, but I would give her the benefit of the doubt at least once. Oh yeah, she can have one bad period, but the first next month, no. But he literally says if she says the same thing next week, then be concerned, lol. So obviously, lots of people's support now. But what I found in the messages, lots of them were, well, if she was planning on having sex with you, it makes sense for her to cancel. If I wanted sexy time on the day but had my period, I would reschedule too. Sounds like she has sex on the brain and thought the pee would ruin it, so wait a week. This is first dates we're talking about. I've got no judgement for people that want to have sex on a first date. But, mate, like, let's see how it goes first before you think I'm going to be banging you. Do you know what I mean? But that is literally where guys' minds go. Okay, um, she's either lying or... She wanted to bang me, and she can't bang me if she's on a period. Like, disgusting. I just feel like there's no understanding for it. That, like, some women... My old flatmate actually literally couldn't go to work when she was on a period. Like, some cramps and stuff are so painful. And also, obviously, affects your mood and your hormones. The people can't go anywhere. And I would like it to be more widely known that people cancel stuff because of periods and that's okay and we shouldn't be like judged for it basically but i will say in this thread there are lots of people saying i personally do it too because i can't function from the pain in the first couple of days for my period my guess is that that might be a situation she wanted to be honest about it so there are definitely people that are fighting this cause which i'm so glad about but i was surprised to look into it and realize that so many guys do feel like that like grow up is honestly what i want to say do you know i've got experiences actually with two guys i dated right when i came on my period one of them was my ex who was a really nice guy but really um i hadn't really been in a relationship before so i was really like inexperienced oh my god guys i woke up in the middle of the night no it wasn't even the middle of the night i woke up the next day and i'd come on in the night and i was like oh shit i've come on like sorry we hadn't long been dating but i wasn't embarrassed because i felt comfortable around him and he was a nice guy yeah so i was like oh sorry um yeah i've come on he was like oh my god are you okay I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I just need some tampons. Like, would you mind going to get me some? Yeah, I'll go and get you some, but are you sure you're not cut? <laughs> like, are you sure Are you sure you're okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. It literally happens to me once a month, if I'm lucky, <laughs> obviously. I literally just need some tampons. <sighs> okay, I just... Seems like a, like a lot of blood, like... I was like, I am fine. It's literally just a period. Like, why are people so... It's like they don't know what to do with it. Like, I guarantee there's somebody, when I put... If I put a reel of this up, I'll get the same type of um, audience as the prejudice... No, not prejudice. Promiscuous. That would be like, oh my God, disgusting. Shouldn't talk about that. Why shouldn't we talk about something that is so natural? I've, I honestly hate it that it's become so taboo. I think... 
preach it. My friends actually inspired me that if you've got a period, be honest about it. Don't be shy about it because it's literally a natural thing. And if you're a guy, you should believe that and accept it because there's a million other excuses the girls can say. If she doesn't want to see you, she doesn't want to see you. If she's saying, I can't see you this week because my period, but let's see each other next week. That Just take it as the truth you know, and my second story with the Pira guy is a guy I was dating, so I was, oh my god, I was so much more embarrassed, right, you know that time when you know you're going to come on your period, right, I planned to see this guy, and I really liked him, we were dating, and I was like, right, can I get one more day now before I come on, say this was like a Friday night, I was like, please period, like, please hold off until Saturday for me, please, 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 do this one favour for me, I, de- I put up with you and the shit you give me every single month, just allow me to go and see this guy tonight, I went, it was fine, obviously when we did the deed, the period was like, no, I give up, <laughs> you didn't tell me about this, I don't want any partner and I'm absolutely ruining your time, so obviously same thing happened, I came on, the guy was, I was, <laughs> the funniest thing was, the guy was like, oh my god, you've come, like, come on your period, he was older, he was more experienced, forever. and I was like, oh my god, I have, oh, sorry, <laughs> I was not expecting that, <laughs> as if, like, obviously I knew it was coming, I obviously knew it was coming, I just tried my luck, and we should never try our luck with Mother Nature, I should have known better than that, but I didn't, anyway, he handled it so so well he literally said to me straight away he's like you go in the shower and I'll clean up you don't worry about it put me in the shower not put me but you know what I mean sorted me out went in the shower gave me a towel I came out by the time I'd come out guys this man had stripped the bed clean redressed it was dressed sat there he was like are you okay like do you need anything and I was like no no it's fine weirdly I don't even think I went home no I must have I must have, um, I was like, no, no, I'm fine, and we just chatted, and I was like, what a lovely guy, that is the type of guy we like to respect, although I did bleed over his towel, and I was too embarrassed to leave it for him to wash, so I stole his towel, <laughs> and I kept it in my bedroom, obviously I washed it, but I kept it in my bedroom for, honestly, I think until I moved out, it might have even been a year, because it was like I'm never going to meet up with him in a bar and take his towel we never spoke about the fact I even took it but he obviously knew I did because he gave me a towel and I never returned it and I also felt guilty I never used it because I was like it's his towel so I just stayed on the top of my wardrobe as like a reminder it was like a mother nature towel reminder like don't try your luck again bitch because I will ruin your night and I will ruin your life So yeah, period taboo, lots of taboo topics this week, keep them coming, if you've got any thoughts as always about anything, send them in the DMs to me, and yeah, because my friend actually wanted to hear people's feedback, and obviously I've only given her the Reddit thread, so, Reddit thread? Reddit thread, so yeah, if you have any comments, please let me know, I know it's a bit short and sweet this week, but I have to wrap it up now, so thank you as always for watching, thank you for listening. Please come and follow me. Please come and subscribe. It honestly makes my day. And it's a huge, huge help to me. I'm almost at 100 reviews on Spotify as well. So if you've not left me a review yet, please do so. And as always, just let me know what you think. And yeah, come and chat to me. Thank you so much. And I'll speak to you next week.